to because most of what I do requires soldering. Yeah, then you have to say you need assemble components that you can't get by without. Factor logic. You can get rid of these. I use a pliers for a heat sink. I have the rubber band on it to keep them closed. And this is how you solder switches, the tiny switches. without ending up with one functional switch after soldering 10 of them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me while I put my glasses on. I'm kind of awkward. I've got the camera not between me and the work. Makes it a little bit awkward. I put in and twisted. Okay. Here's what I'm using for a heat sink. Be surprised how much heat you can put on one of these switches if you have heat sinks on it. Now, let's slide the shrink tubing into place and shrink it up. I got a heat gun, but no place to set it down because I have the computer taking up that spot. Pardon my cheap webcam. But it's my first one. It looks good on my end, but I think it's like uh, slow motion around the other side. But uh, as I progress, I will get something a little better. I recycle a lot of wire. Most of it come out of old vending machines that uh, used the wiring harnesses were new old stock of machines that aren't around anymore. It got assembled, never used, sat on a shelf for years. Good as new. And I was buying it by the bag. In uh, a relatively good buy, bargain basement electronics, you know. But, uh, Pin the end of this wire. Breaking in a new pair of bifocals. I've never worn them before. I'm getting used to them. So pardon me if I seem a bit awkward. But it sure beats being bleary eyed after all this is done having to go lay down somewhere and rest my eyes. Yeah, 
Yeah, I've reached that age. Oh, but with it came a little wisdom, so I can't really complain. Not everybody gets wisdom with age, but I was fortunate. Yeah, I need to cut myself a few pieces of, uh, well, actually two pieces will do the job here. And I want them to be the same size, so it looks nice. Don't necessarily have to be, but it's always nice. And I thread them on before I do my soldering. I could put them on afterwards, but I'm just demonstrating it for technique. That you want you want your uh, heat shrink on beforehand, in case the other end of the wire is soldered to something, because then you got a problem. <laughs> You're gonna wind ooh, those are pinched together a little bit, and you have to unsolder and resolder, and all of a sudden you're not happy, and that's not good. This is supposed to be. A happy hobby. Now I use this, I say for a heat sink. And there you see it. Now I bring this up and I bring the solder up. Just need a bare touch. And I want to straighten the wire out a long ways. Okay, take that out and a little tail there. I don't want a problem with that. Turn it down. There we go. And bring down a piece of heat shrink. There it is. And Ended up back here where it's nice and warm on the iron. And I say I got a heat gun, but no place to put it because the computer is right there, right where the right where I'd set my little plate for putting my heat gun on because I have a wooden bench top. Okay, time for the heat sink. Time to put everything together. Always check, make sure before you do that last solder drawing on the wire that your heat shrink is on there because you don't want to have to take it, take it back apart and do the job over. In my previous trade, before I retired, there was an old saying. Never enough time to do the job right the first time, but always enough time to do it over. And I also had my own with a customer who wanted their car back the same day after giving it a good thrashing. That you're, that uh, my job is not your emergency because I want to get it done right and I don't want to see it come back. There we go. brings to mind a funny story. I used to do R&R, &R, which is remove and replace when I first started. And what I was removing and replacing was transmissions back in the days of rear wheel drive. And a customer come in with a Chevy Nova. He wanted to bring the car in that morning and drive it home that night. Well, I can remove a transmission fast, but boss's son can rebuild a Turbo 350 like lightning, and I can install them like lightning. 
and we didn't have lifts. We used tall jack stands and end lifts. So I get this car so where it's about two and a half, three, three feet off the ground, and start. And then I start removing the transmission while the customer is talking to me. And this gets funny because I'm working with air tools, and I have a a small tool chest on a creeper that I keep with me, and then I have my own creeper that I'm working on. And uh, it's all air tools, air ratchets, and uh, impact impact gun. I have his transmission on the ground in 15 minutes, and he and then he just wanders away, and I don't know what's going on. And then after he leaves, the, the owner comes up to me and says, "Never let him see you pull any, pull him down that fast." He came in and wondered what he was paying for. And he says he explained it to him. You're putting, yeah, he's paying for your skill to get it out, my son's skill to rebuild it, and your skill to put it back in in a timely manner. And uh, after that, he kind of thought about it for a while because, yeah, he wanted to drive it home that night. He wanted it done right. And uh, it turned out perfect. Now, he brought that car back three days later for a bad smell. And, uh, okay, got to look at this. And you can see that this switch is polarized. It's got a positive and negative. These ends are the LED. And these are the switch contacts I'm going to be using. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put black on the negative, red on the positive. And I'm going to put two black wires here because I'm going to switch hot. And, they're, and they're gonna, it's going to be hot coming and going. And I always like to use the common colors of electrical codes. Yeah, if you got if you see that your AC lines coming in from the house, you got one black and one white. Well, essentially what I'm doing is bringing the black straight out of the wall socket through the switch and back to the power supply on this. This is going into a power feed. So I need some red wire and some black wire. Here's the smallest I got, and I just happen to have some right here. Imagine that. I'm going to make it long enough to go through the whole chassis because I'm going to wind up cutting. This is like a prototype built. I've never built a chassis that this is going in before. So, let me strip these in. Excuse me while I find my wire strippers. Yes, I did. Yes. I'll have to make, make do with their diapers. So, excuse me, and I'll talk to you while I'm doing this. Anyway, customer brings this car back in after three days of having it home and says it, has, it smells really bad. And uh, nothing we did would have made it smell like it smelled when it came in. And the boss man goes out there to have it look, because the guy hadn't even opened his own hood yet. And uh, he opens the hood and finds a dead cat laying on, laying on the exhaust manifold of a 350 Chevrolet. And uh, it was not <laughs> nice. My boss man was a 76 year old guy in, in North Long Beach, California, and had his shop for like forever. My mom knew the family. And uh, it was a dead cat causing the smell. So the guy says, Can you, can you take out the dead cat? And my boss looks at him and says, It's not my cat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we called animal control to remove this cat because we didn't have no place to put it and uh, the guy didn't want to take it out himself so animal control took care of the problem 
And afterwards, the boss comes over and he talks to me again after this customer leaves. He said, I wouldn't ask you boys to do anything I would not do myself. <laughs> this is a 76-year-old man. He was, he was kind of funny. I didn't enjoy working for him. I left his shop and moved one county down to be with my current wife. Let's see. Oh, it's a side I got to be put on. So I'll put a little bit of solder on here. I'm not going to run it through the hole because the wires are slightly too big for that on this one. I will give them a nice solder joint. Oops, did I miss it? Real good. Not going anywhere. And I will do the same thing to the other side. But uh, that was a story of the bad smell on transmission. <laughs> I still get a chuckle out of it to this day. Not really sure why, but it's funny. And I am glad that I didn't have to pull that cat out of there. Apparently it had been dead in there on a hot exhaust manifold since, since he got it home because we didn't have any cats living around our shop. And the shop was next to a junkyard, and we didn't have no cats back there either. A funny story. I do get PO'd when somebody ruins my good work. And that happened with a customer's ex-wife. I had rebuilt the engine on her little honeybee. It was a 1.2 liter L4 motor overhead valve. Oops. And uh, the husband decided he would do the carburetor before it was returned to me. I did the motor and the carburetor had a couple of problems with it. One of them was the accelerator pump, and the other was it leaked a little here and there. So I was going to do a kit on it, and the lady was going to bring it back the next week. So in the meantime, the husband decides he's going to make some points with his ex wife, and uh, takes it upon himself to rebuild the car. Put actually put a rebuilt carburetor on it. The guy comes in with his ex-wife and the motor's knocking. There we go. Motor is knocking. And uh, he's blaming blaming me for my engine building skills. I mean, I built 440 Chrysler's that turned 6,000 RPM. Not a problem. And he's, he's telling me that I can't build a four-cylinder <laughs> engine for the street. And... Uh, well, the motor's under warranty, but when I get into it, I uh, open the hood and hear it run. 
knocking in the top, top end, so I figure I'm going to pull ahead and see what's going on. And on my way to pull ahead, two of the nuts that go on the studs that hold the carburetor to the intake manifold, two out of four, are not there. However, when I lifted the intake manifold, I found them. They were on piston, one was on piston number two embedded into it, and one other was on piston three embedded into it. But yet, that somehow was my fault. Still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, I hate my work being ruined. So I asked the gentleman that the next time the trash man comes down down by his street that he take make sure that his tools are sitting next to the curb because he obviously doesn't know how to use them. Uh, I don't care if he got PO because he wasn't a customer. His wife wasn't impressed with his work either. <laughs> I think if she did anything, she reminded and reminded him of what I said and made sure he did it. But, uh, but I did three engines that week, start to finish. In a 40-hour work week, I pulled three motors out. Rebuilt three motors and installed three motors. And that's why I love being on Flag Hour. That week I made over $2,100. Not bad for a guy with a high school education. But, uh, needless to say, with the uh, damage done on that motor, it was not done under warranty. Husband had to buy another cylinder head because of the one he worked on was beat to heck. And I had to go in and replace two pistons again. The first time it came in, I don't know who tuned it, but it had pre-ignition to beat the band. And that original cylinder head looked like it lost a fight with an anti-tank gun. The uh, two nuts lost in the bores didn't do it any favors. Bent valves, usual. But, uh, Oh, he also nagged me because he didn't think there was any oil in the motor. The shop I was in at the time was right next to a Napa auto parts store, and we used Napa oil. And it was so clear, you had to know what you were looking for. <laughs> you couldn't see it unless you knew that you were basically looking for a wet spot on the dipstick. The motor was essentially brand new and uh, so there was no dirt or whatnot in the oil to give it away Let me squeeze it down a little bit there tin the end of that I love it when customers bitch me out for no reason. <laughs> but did that for 35 years until I was medically retired. Bad ticker.
Yeah, but what was funny was I was talking to the uh, state rep for California. I used to, that was, my primary job was emissions inspection and tuning at the shop I worked at before I moved here. And uh, I didn't know it, but it says, he told me most of the guys were diabetic. So I, I took a different tack. I, I had a heart condition. But that wasn't diagnosed until I moved and got into another new job. Again, I was in management. Born to manage, I guess. Oh, I didn't get this thing good and tinned. But, I'd give anything to be able to work my job again. I don't handle the heat well, and this is Oklahoma. Uh, moving is kind of out of the question because I no longer work. Can't work. Yeah, I'm tired of ambulance rides twice a week, minimum. Uh, one day, twice in a day. When I realized it was over. But it was good while she lasted. So, now I try to make do on what the government gives me, and uh, what little I can scratch up doing this. And that's nice, hands all the same. I think I'll go with something a little bigger this time. Right. <coughs> <coughs> well, for the first six years of my life, it was good. I have no complaints. Could have been better, I guess. I guess.
Next time I think I'll paint that vice black. Make this a little easier to see. Okay, let's check out the LED, make sure the LED works. And that is this pair here. Okay. Black on negative, red on positive. There we go. Perfect. Now we check the switch. Yeah, the handy dandy El Cheapo switch tester because it's small and handy to keep handy. Okay, let's see. Okay, now that leaves us with these two. And yeah, they're not polarized anyone. Either one will work with either thing. Yeah, make this a little easier. Good. And that's it for the night.